guys this is dr koda fix welcome back in today's video edition here i'm gonna be teaching you guys things you should never do when your car is overheating different car makes and model have a different configuration and parameters which they are designed and that parameters and differences is what made some to handle overheating much more better and absorb it than others now for cars like uh Mercedes, BMW, Volkswagen, Honda, Pujo, Ford, yes, Ford. These cars are legend. They are legend when we come when we talk about overheating. If there is any car which I know which are very terrible in handling overheating is Toyota cars. Sorry for you Toyota users, you know, a minute silence. Now we go further. One of the things you should never do when your car is overheating, you know, when people notice their car is overheating, you either saw some steam going up in the air or you're perceiving some smoke. And the first instinct that comes to you is to hurry and remove the gas cap. Never remove the gas or the, the coolant cap or the coolant reservoir cap because within that very point there, the system is highly pressurized and it's having a lot of hot coolant right in there. So you don't want to do that because you're gonna injure yourself you're gonna create a huge damage on yourself it's gonna splash that water on you that's why most manufacturers we see do not open the reservoir when your car is uh, is working because it's under pressure there is a pressurizer there is a pressurized system right there and it's harboring a hot coolant inside which when splash on you can cause a severe degree burn damages so you don't want to do that now the second thing you don't want to do when your car is overheating is having your ac on that's terrible when you have your ac on when you know, your car is over, you're simply amplifying the problem so the first uh, the, the the thing you have to do that is to shut down your car ac because when you shut down your car ac you are lessening the load that is on the engine and the engine can be able to at least to have less impact on the overheating i mean have a have some sort of management in the overheating not the extra load so we have less burden so the overheating will be a little bit of uh, less the third thing you don't want to do when your car is overheating is pouring coolant inside the system even after using a rag or anything to open the coolant circuitry you don't want to do that because for most models be it equipped with the metallic cylinder head gasket or the non-metallic as soon as you get water into this reservoir here right now let's take a look at it you see do not open when hot do not open when hot so there's the, the stipulated right there but a lot of people it's not in those old days uh, uh cars or ones that you pour the coolant directly into the radiator you might not see this very description so it's on it's pressurized and it's hot so don't pour water in here when your car is overheating maybe when you see boiling water up don't do it you want to wait for the car to cool down to some certain degree before you start adding any coolant into the system else it's gonna help in deteriorating the coolant of your car sorry the engine of your car the fourth thing you don't want to do when your car is overheating is to keep driving the car if you're driving the car you are worsening the situation because uh there are possible things that can actually cause the overheating such as the radiator fan or the uh or the um the coolant pump that fails so in any of this your driving it is not gonna help things but rather ruin things further so the best thing you want to do under that condition is to find a very cool spot to park your car and allow it to cool off if suppose you want to uh, get some of the steam out faster you can find a rag and cover this up and just open it slightly and leave it or you can just leave it that way even if it's overflowing the best thing you can do is to distance yourself because things can go haywire in a matter of minutes or a matter of split seconds so you don't want to be part of the you don't want to be the victim that is going to be uh seriously injured at the cost of your car overheating now what should you do when your car is overheating well you can quickly uh you can quickly try to inspect if suppose the fan is running if the fan doesn't kick on then there is every tendency that uh you could be having a bad fan a blown fuse or a bad uh, 
fan really any of this can actually constitute to the reason why the fan is not blowing then the other part there is the sensor could be bad the coolant temperature sensor could be bad and if the temp coolant temperature sensor is bad the fan may not come on so for some of them which you can be able to jump not like this very fan here you can decide to give it a direct power so it cool off the the coolant that is present inside the radiator now the other side you want to do is to pour water on the engine this depends on the car maker model if your engine is very susceptible for the uh, coolant to have intrusion into the ignition coil uh, ignition spark plug area then don't however if your car has overheated really much and you want to cut down the downtime that you gotta wait before you start driving your car again you can gently sprinkle water on the engine block and the top cylinder head in so doing the steams and the heat will be given off quickly and it's going to cut down your waiting time that you're going to wait before pouring water into the uh the coolant uh, reservoir other thing you want to do when your car let's say after the car finish overheating and you want to start uh, going or trying to get to a safe place you want to open here and observe if suppose there is water coming from this very return line for the newer model systems there is a return line so if there is what coolant is not returning here after topping off the coolant when your car is has come to after four hours of the overheating top off the coolant start up the car and see if there is a return if it's not returning then you could be having a bad coolant pump and if that's the case then you want to tow the car, don't want to drive the car again. Uh, for some other cars, some other things that you can do to improve the coolant uh, uh, over, uh, overheating in your car is you should go and turn on your heater core inside your car. When you turn on your heater, it helps to dissipate the heat faster and also that cuts the downtime. However, let's take a look at some other things you have to understand when your car overheated. For some cars, they are not self-bleeding. Mercedes is self-bleeding. Pujo is not self-bleeding. A lot of Pujos are not self-bleeding and they have a lot of bleeding points which you need to take a look at. So go ahead and watch my, what you should do uh, when your Pujo is overheating. You wanna go ahead and bleed the air out of the system else any air trapped inside the system can cause a lot of more problems, right? So these are my tips, my safe tips when your car is overheating and what you should do which will help you reduce the level of damage that we occur. Now, what should you be looking at after the overheating? Let's take a look at something here. Depends on the driving, if you're driving Toyota, well, the worst case scenario there is you have a blown top cylinder head gasket. That is not even the worst. The worst is that you have a serious engine damage. If you're driving Honda, you may have just a blown top cylinder head gasket or no blown top cylinder head gasket. If you are driving Pujo, that is, stock, that is having a stock uh, top cylinder head gasket, it may just be to replace the coolant after four hours and you drive it if you have a stock that's why the stock top cylinder head gasket is is the real deal volkswagen the same ford the same even though if it loses compression even though when you're seeing smoke out of the uh out of the uh hood don't panic all right because your panicking cannot change anything your crying cannot change anything so that is not the ideal thing to do in that uh, way in that uh, situation however like i said the worst of all uh i haven't had experience with nissan i gonna be honest with you guys uh but when it comes to honda mercedes bmw volkswagen pujo i've had tons of experience so i can tell you for fact and forth i can tell you for fact that these cars can run let's say you run out of coolant nothing goes by but the the coolant is insufficient and there is air trapped inside the system it's gonna vomit all those coolant that is within the system out and when it vomited out you're gonna let it cool off the engine will lose compression and shut down it's, you'll be hearing some pinging noise right you'll be freaking out a lot of people are gonna be freaking out oh my engine has not no it's not not the pinging noise is due to overheating so give it like four hours but if you want to cut down the downtime use what the method which i told you which i've used several times and it works like a charm so after that then if you have this set of brand which I call a side Toyota, your 90% chance of driving the car home or to a safe place is guaranteed. But uh, if it is Toyota that you have, consider the reverse, you have only 10% that you may leave that very place with the car, not being torn or not replacing the top cylinder head gasket. And uh, worst of all, you may be looking for another engine. So guys, I hope you find this very helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.
to subscribe and turn on the notification and the most important thing about subscribing is not just subscribing if you're subscribing be sure to be watching the video to keep you posted there is someone who was asking me the kind of car i was driving when i was talking about car that takes more gas when the ac is on and i was even showing the car right in the video so that says that he prefers to ask questions instead of watching the video so if you're this kind of person well 